Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Real Influencers Project. I'm your host, Craig Reynolds. With me today is a man that has supported more athletes in a variety of sports than anyone that I can possibly think of. Nothing that I can say will do him justice. So let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Todd Hicks. Todd, how are you doing today? Wonderful. Appreciate you, Craig. It is so so good to see you um i've thanked you before but i will thank you from the jump off you made a huge impact on my career as an amateur as a professional just you made it better you helped protect me when i was out there going as fast as i could with product and gear um and friendship and i cannot tell you what that means to me and which is why i'm always grateful and have considered you a friend from day one. So thank well, you. I appreciate, I appreciate that very much. But what you got to remember is we did it together. It wasn't just me. It wasn't just you. It was the combination of the both of us. And that's what matters the most at the end of the day. And by the way. Oh, yes. Dude. I love it. Such a good helmet, dude. I love it. I'm so glad that I gave that to you too. And that you got it. Yes. I got it. So stoked. No. She's so still stoked. here. She's gonna live on. I love it, man. That is awesome. That is the coolest. So yeah. let's get started, my friend. Tell me about, I mean, how did you get started into forget that? Where did you grow up? Let's start from there. Yeah, I grew up in uh Northern California in a uh, small town of about 35,000, San Carlos, California, and grew up there for about 20 years of my life. And uh, from there, I ended up going to Foster City for a couple of years and uh, hung out there from 21 until about 23 with my dad and then moved in with uh, Greg Fox and a couple other folks down in Morgan Hill. California. Okay. I've been there ever since. And what were you doing growing up? Like what were the your your sports of choice? I and mean, what are the things that you <laughs> loved doing growing up? Well, my sport of choice was motocross, obviously. And uh I grew up doing it when uh I started a very young youth full age of uh 10 years old, 1980, and uh carried on through until I was 23. I went to work for the company in 1990, but I was sponsored by the company back in 1981 because I kind of grew up with the family within Mm -hmm. our local racing scene and our local racing area. So I became friends with the the father and the three sons and they all raced and mom and sister and everybody was around and it was, it was, it was a good time and it was very uh, educating for me because at the same time I was just a young, young kid, but now I'm sponsored. So I started to learn about how to be respectable and a sponsored athlete, basically. Were you at that, at the level of, okay, there's a chance that I'm going to turn pro and I'm going to have to go to Loretta Lynn's and do the amateur races and do that whole circuit and that whole song and dance to, to get to that level of motocross, supercross. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, it, those, like, when I was racing, like, the first Loretta Lens was in 1983, I think, or 82, 83, I believe, and uh, I had already gone, the biggest race back then was Ponca City, Oklahoma, and it wow. was the Grand National Championships, and that's where all the boys went, and then Loretta Lens, which was an AMA national Ponca was a NMA, National Motocross Association, where mm-hmm. the American Motocross Association. So uh, different, you know, uh, sanctioning bodies. But at the same time, uh, Ponca City was more of the premier event before Loretta's when I was racing anyway. Got um, yeah. Did you ever go to, and, and for those that don't know, Loretta Lynn's is like, the, the, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the, or if not the biggest amateur race of the season where the best of the best go 
and people that are going to make it to that next level are there. They're winning. People are getting scouted. Did you go there and looking for the next big guy that was coming up? And, and if you did, who was your, your, the biggest one that you saw? Absolutely. I mean, that was uh, the, moving on within my career of after racing, I went to work for the company basically. And uh, my job was to scout out the next fine talent that came through. And uh, back in, <laughs> back in the late nineties, there was a young gentleman by the name of James Stewart and uh, <laughs> another gentleman by the name of Travis Pastrana that uh, I had my eyes on that were keen to the game and uh, had the style and performance and attitude and personality that went along with all of it. And uh, I saw that because I was once an athlete. Now I knew what it took to be like, I knew what it took to be like a sponsored athlete. So I was able to take what I've learned as a youthful athlete and bring it to them and explain to them how it worked. But at the same time, they were all naturals anyway, and their abilities and skills were way above anybody else's. So <laughs> they did, the, all their talking was done on the racetrack. Right, yeah, two, two of the greatest ever, for sure. Um, yeah. Now, let, let back to your portion of the sport, as, as you're retiring from racing, what was that transition like for you? And what was the influence for you to go, okay, you know what, I can go this route, but I think I'm going to shut it down because I can be more effective going a different direction. I think uh, that's a really good question that you asked because my main goal was always to be able to help athletes and help people grow and become something that maybe they are questioning themselves on or not being able to have that positive attitude to move forward. So my big thing was to be able to give these people the confidence. And uh, I quit racing in 1993. I went to work for the company in 1990. And uh I worked in the warehouse for, you know, three and a half years before I even got started to, to become what I always wanted to be, which was a team manager. And I always wanted to be able to give back to the people that were performing and doing. And I felt that I had the, the creative eye and the natural talent eye to be able to grab those kids and grab the right talent to bring to the company that I work for, kind of like Michael Jordan and Nike type of scenario you know what right I mean? was it pretty exciting for them to to get that phone call from you that hey i've been i, I've been I believe you so race. what's up I, I i would like to say it was but at the same I'm time sure it, 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 i mean it, 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 for me it was one of those things where i was already gassed and excited to have them involved and you know, I, I, working for the best, one of the best brands in the industry, if not the best brand by far during that era and uh, timeline, I, I felt like I had, I had a little horsepower under my hood to be able to gather and capture what I was interested in without having to work too hard, if that makes right. sense. It makes right. a lot of sense. A little bit of horsepower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're a monster V8, dude. What are you talking about? Uh, well, I mean, it all comes with growth. I mean, it's not just one person that took it, you know, took this company to the next level or took Fox to the next level it was a mm -hmm. that that's one of the best stories about this brand is it came from it came from a family nest. But then everybody that was joining, they were all joining a family and everybody was with everybody. And everybody was engaged with everybody. And I mean, it, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, everybody was going out to the local pub and getting hammered, but everybody was talking business and in a positive way. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a synergy there that I haven't ever experienced other than those moments within my life. And uh, I'm telling you right now, looking at other other places and other things it's uh quite incredible to accomplish such you know and yeah. and we did and we did it as a group i mean it comes from terra firma it comes from john fox it comes from i mean a list of people i mean this house that i live in now housed five employees of the company 
but we would come home and we would talk BS and we would talk story and we would talk, you know, business a little bit here and there, but ideas and the creative that came right. from that is what put the, is, it's really honestly what put the company to the next level, along with the family believing in what we were seeing, right? Because every sport that we got involved with, Craig, was a sport that we were all passionate with. It didn't matter if it was BMX, didn't matter if it was mountain bike, didn't matter if it was weightboarding, surfing, skateboarding, you know, snowmobiling, like, we were all involved with that as a, a, a family, a group of us. And we would go to the lake and we would go camping. And there were a group of us that all worked together. But, you know, those things came to an end and uh, times changed and things are different now. And it was uh, a monumental piece of life and moment in business history that a company should always stare at because we had the leeway, we had the rope, we had the slack to be able to do what we wanted. But in return, the people that were in charge were very considerate of the family business and the family money. And that was part of my job. I just took it as I was part of the family and it was my responsibility to protect this money and what mm -hmm. they were giving me in order to divvy it the right way. What a, what a wonderful place to be in at that time for you to grow and learn and take your knowledge and experience and really have that trust from them, knowing that you're doing the right thing for the business because they're giving you the opportunity to do it. Like Absolutely. That's fantastic. No, no, totally. And I mean, there, there's plenty of other things. I mean, <laughs> I mean, sure. we, went, we sure. went on, we went on such tangents and we went out of our box so much because motocross was the limelight of action sports, right? Everybody was wanting to be involved, whether you were Danny way or Dave Mira or you name it, any one of those action sports guys, they were all about it because motocross was dangerous, death defying. It was the gnarliest thing out there. And yeah. for me, I was always a racer, kind of like you. I was never a freestyle guy. I was never a jump park guy. I was never a park mm -hmm. guy, right? Right. And at the same time, I respected those, those riders and those athletes, but that developed over time and became more popular as motocross was the sport to be involved with. Right. You know, I mean, it dates back to you and Marty Yockel and I mean, guys that are rooted in motocross, TJ Lavin, Dave Mira, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like guys like that, that know the sport and know the brand. And that was one right. of the hardest breakthroughs was, hey, we're a motocross brand, but now we're cooler than most brands because this sport is the coolest. So let's break out of our shell and let's move on and let's right. motivate ourselves to go different directions. That's where BMX came into play. That's where mountain bike came into play, wakeboarding, surfing, snowmobiling, like all those aspects. And it, it, it's one of those things that's incredible from my position and my point of view, because Normally, you wouldn't have that ability to chase what you right. love and sports you're involved with within right. a company. Anyway, everybody mm -hmm. would put the brakes on, right? And be like, mm -hmm. eh, I don't know, you know, like, well, maybe you should try wakeboarding or maybe you should go out and catch a surf. You know what I mean? And yeah, see stepping outside of the box. So what do they say? What got you here isn't going to get you where you want to go right. to tomorrow, right? I mean, th that's the thing about John Fox and Greg Fox were skateboarders by heart. I mean, they had a mega ramp at their house out, really? in, the, out in the woods that <laughs> him and John and his dad built together. It's, a, it's the most phenomenal thing you've, you'll ever see in photos. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it was a passion that they had other than motocross, right? Right. So right. those sports, like, they flourished within us because it was different than what we did every day. Mm -hmm. You do next every day, right? Right. We right. went to the racetrack every week 
three or four times, right? Yep. Continuous, continuous, continuous. We don't want to burn out, but at the same right. time, we still want to grow within ourselves, right? And do something mm-hmm. that's still like, I mean, wakeboarding is two wakes and it's like a tabletop, right. just like a motocross jump. There's yep. no difference. Now, what am I going to do in between landing from side to side? I'm going to uh-huh. do a poke. I'm going to do a grab. I'm going to do a 360 or a 180, right? But I'm going to do it over the tabletop. And mm-hmm. that's the mentality that we took and we right. had. And it was cool. It was fun. And it, it we grew from it. And mm-hmm. it was awesome. And that's well, how we evolved. You started in motocross, obviously. What was the next evolutionary step for you? And, and what was your vision going? You know what? I want to go to this sport because this is the next one that makes sense. And then what was it after that and after that? Uh, the next one was BMX because it was the most relative. And uh, right. that's where you came into play. That's where Marty Yako came into play. That's where mm-hmm. Brian, the Foster brothers came into play. Those are... Those are the things that we took into consideration moving forward. Now, Mm -hmm. obviously, we didn't have at that time, we didn't have the crank or the bank in order to dip into the largest in the world. But at the same time, we had personalities that were involved and they were Mm -hmm. the right personalities to be involved with the brand and carry us to the next level. And then, you know, I it just it goes on from there. I mean, from the BMX side, then it started to become the mountain bike side, right? Mm -hmm. And then the mountain bike side was, I mean, that was crazy. I mean, the first two guys I hired were Sean Palmer and Kurt Vorty. Listen, every time- Or Randy Lawrence, and then Kurt Vorty came over after that. It was, that's my bad. Such incredible, incredible talented dudes. Yeah, no, and and there's, there's two guys that wanted to look like motocrossers on their- bikes and right. that's how that's how that whole thing came to be it right. was because they wanted to be involved and look like motocrossers on their mountain bikes coming down the hill and i mean between palmer and and randy rl they changed the sport and then Bori jumped in right all these others started missy giovi we sponsored cannondale yes. miles rockwell like, I mean, and then, I mean, then you have to go to the whole, like, cross-country side where you got Tinker Juarez, you got Allison Sider, like, mm-hmm. I mean, she's an Olympic champion, you know? So it's like all these things are going on at once, along with BMX, along with motocross, and now right. we're starting to look, now we're starting to look at, oh, well, maybe we should fiddle-diddle around a little bit in wakeboarding. Oh, you why know what not? I mean? Why right. not? Right. I mean, what a departure. So, You're going from a dirt motorcycle BMX to wakeboarding. And, and what a, a contrast of, of styles and things. And but how right and perfect is that for you? The brothers, the brothers were surfers, right? So I was blessed back in 1994 to meet a wonderful man by the name of Sonny Garcia that <laughs> uh, took me Jeez. under his wing, right? took me under his wing. I hooked up with him at Las Vegas Supercross via Oakley. If you guys need to, you guys need to Google Sonny Garcia, gnarliest, gnarliest, gnarliest dude, like surfing legend, like legend. Look it up. Continue on Todd. Sorry. At the same time. I mean, I was going to Hawaii, like I was going to Hawaii like two times a month. Because I was, I was just, I had so many miles from traveling all over the place. So whenever I had an extra moment, I was like, oh, screw it. I'll just go to Hawaii and hang out with my friends, right? And I went over so many times that, like, I became family with all these people right. and uh, created a whole new life for myself over there. And these people took me in as one of their kids. And I, I grew up with Sonny. I grew up with Kalani. I grew up with Akila Aipa and Ben, his dad, and I, my tattoo artist, Mika Canlas. He's over there doing his thing. And like, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's one of those things where once you're part of the family over there, you're part of the family. And, and it, feels, it feels right. It doesn't feel abnormal. 
it feels right. good. And uh, so I became uh, on and on. I became super good friends with Sonny and he was always about dirt biking and always loved to ride moto. And he kind of took off on his own path and did his own thing after I got him introduced. And I mean, obviously he's Sonny, so it's not just me, but at the same time, he uh, got himself involved with the industry and it, life went on from there. And uh, that was, that was the story of surf. But I mean, there's a lot of others that are involved with surfing and, you know, Kalani was a major part. Akila Ipa was a major part. I mean, I've got friends that passed away that were part of it. Todd Chesser, there's, there's other guys that were involved with the whole thing. And uh, they were, they were stoked because we were a motocross brand stoked on them and they were stoked on motocross. So how easy was that to transform? Right. Right. Yeah. I I feel like the motocross look is similar to the skateboarding kind of a look. It's like a, it's a lifestyle. Right. Where you look oh, at skateboarding, sure. it's just not a sport on a skateboard, kids skating. It's a lifestyle. They've got such good style and a look and a vibe about them. If I'm going to dress up in these hot leathers and a full face helmet and goggles, I want to look as cool as I possibly can. And the motocross look was much better than trying to look like you're not a motocrosser. Right. I mean, that to me was well, what I you mean, were striving I- for. I mean, the guy that transformed probably the most was Miles. Like, Miles was a spandex guy. I right. mean, he won the kamikaze, right? But at the right. end of the day, he was, I mean, he was a motocross guy by heart. Mm-hmm. So he transformed after he saw Palmer and he saw RL, right? And he saw Voorhees and he saw a couple of these others coming through. And he's like, man, that's, that's the look I want. Right. So then we right. start. I mean, I've got pants downstairs that are still they're 20 years old for Palmer that are specialized right. pants. You know, I heard a story about Palmer because he had already had his snowboards and had made his mark in snowboarding for a long time that he went into specialized and was like, here's what I want contract wise. Take it or leave it. And they're like, oh, shit, we got to take it. Is that true? Hey, man. Uh, not really. He had an agent. His name was Bob. And uh, I, we always called Bob the grinder. And he's a great guy. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. we always call Bob the grinder because he would just grind the crap out of you and try and get the most out of you. Sure. And that's what his job was, needless to say. But right. at the same time, everybody had a everybody had a mark. Right. And mm-hmm. everybody knew that, hey, if we reach this point or that point, I can't contest to that story a hundred percent, but I can contest from my dealings with, <laughs> with the agent on my side of the business. So uh, I would imagine it's kind of somewhat the same, but neither here nor there. It's uh, right. it's one of those things where it really didn't matter. Sean Palmer changed the sport of mountain biking 1000%. Without question. I mean, what a great personality and a, a, a great person to have in your corner as well, because you knew for sure, whatever was going to go on, that guy was going to get some press. He was no, going to well, do good. And he was going to get some press. He was like, going to do good with. no matter what state of mind he was in. It didn't matter. Yes. He was that yes. confident, Craig. And uh-huh. I saw it and I knew it. And it was something I needed to have a piece of because yes. I believed in it and he performed and he did it. I mean, the guy is incredible. Any guy that I know that can go out, and party until three in the morning and then wake up at six in the morning and drink a beer on the chairlift on the way up and still get third place at a national caliber Norba event is he's pretty phenomenal that yeah. way that way kids I don't promote that by any means but I'm telling you the man is driven Driven. We were on the, we were racing pro open, right. And, and I think it was in black mountain BMX in Phoenix, uh, yep. winter nationals. He's racing pro open. He goes, Craig, how do I get out of the gate? We are literally getting ready to get into the gate. And I'm like, dude, when the first light goes, just go. Right. Yep. And he's like, but man, I just don't, he didn't have the technique, right. He had it for mountain biking, but a BMX bike, you had a slingshot a little bit. So I'm like, all right, here's the deal. 
Sean, when I go, you go. Like, just watch my front wheel. When my front wheel starts to move, then you got to go, okay? And he's like, all right. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and that, like, that was his mentality, right? Like, all I'm right. just going to go do it, which was fantastic. And he was always really cool to me. So yeah. I enjoyed being around that guy. He was really, really neat. Yeah, really neat. And, then, and then you got the whole other, you got the whole other side of the spectrum with somebody like Brian Lopes that I worked with for years, mm -hmm. right? BMX right. background, right? Mountain bike extraordinaire, master genius champion yeah. world yeah. champion yeah. Mm -hmm. the guy's gnarly right yep so you've got for me it was great because i had two totally different personalities at the same time right right so i could work my personality between the two and it, get, enjoy it i guess for lack of better words right. right be stoked because this guy is way out of control but yet this guy is very dialed very calculated, Lopes is very focused, right? right? This guy, he don't care. He could give a shit less, but he's going to go crazy when the gate drops, right? Right. So right. pretty cool, pretty cool shit, you know? So the, that experience that you've had with being able to juggle those types of personalities, was it easy for you to do the same thing And when you went from motocross to BMX to wakeboarding and surfing? Did you find this? There was a lot of similarities between all the yeah, different sports it, it, in that regard. Absolutely. And the, the reason why I feel that way is because I was involved with all the sports that we got involved with as a brand. So right. I knew what BMX took and I knew the right people to get involved with. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't know mountain biking from a shit storm in the wind. All right. <laughs> Greg Fox said, hey, we want you to do mountain biking, Todd. Would, do you want to get involved with mountain biking? And I said, no. He's like, well, what if I buy you a bike? Would you get involved? And I looked at him and I said, you know what? Yeah, I'll get involved. I'll get involved. So he went out and bought me a specialized bike and I started downhilling and we downhilled for, you know, drop runs for seven years. We did that shit. Every Tuesday and Thursday night, we were <laughs> headlamps and like going through the woods in Santa Cruz and Highway 9 and all kinds of crazy shit. And we enjoyed it. But at the same time, I didn't want I was I don't want to hang out with guys that are in spandex and eat granola and bananas and drink water like I'm like uh, motocross is just starting to get to that level where Ricky's coming into play now and he's training and he's getting everything right. done, right? So that kind of stuff wasn't really relevant back when all this stuff was going down mm -hmm. within all the other sports. So it was, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's uh, quite interesting that I did do it, but the thing about my position was if you know what style looks like and you know what technique looks like, and then you know what personality is and you can figure out like their mentality along with personality, along with work ethic, like you can kind of figure things out pretty quick. And for me, that was kind of my forte is, but I also had a brand that was monumental. Right. So right. I'm not going to take away from the brand by any mm -hmm. means, because the right. brand helped me get to where I was and where I am today mm -hmm. because of the fact that it was the Nike of action sports. And that's what that's what we always wanted to be back in the day when we started, when X Games first started. We're like, mm -hmm. well, we got to be the X Games brand no matter what. You get free TV time. You get free advertisement all day long. Right. right. You get personalities, you get interviews, you get recognition. Right. It, it, it's pretty basic and it's more popular than motocross was at that time. Right. Which is there crazy were more to viewers think. tuning into ESPN than there were, you know, Fox Network or whatever network was involved back in the back in the day. Right. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I know it's uh, this is. Been a long no, time there's so much in. more. You haven't. We haven't even dropped in the bucket yet. Oh, let's go then, dude. Hold on. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a quick pause, and then 
we're going to come back and we're going to reset this. Hang on a second. All right. So we're in mountain biking. We've got that pretty much locked down. You've got some of the greatest riders and teams all on the brand. You're taking care of everybody. At what point are you like, all right, what's the next stop? We're going to go do surfing. We're going to do wakeboarding. We're doing whatever other sport that you guys next, need to tap into. Next stop was next stop was wakeboarding. That was uh, our next gig. And uh, it was amazing because we used to go to a event up in Lake Shasta called uh, Boardstock. And it had been around for a real long time. And uh, Emig was really into wakeboarding. Jeff Emig mm -hmm. was. Yep. And uh, he took his party bus up there one weekend and Pete Fox <laughs> went up there with him. And uh, we were already up there on a houseboat having a good time. And basically those guys came and joined us. And uh, during that time, Pete met Sean Murray, the wakeboarder, most famous wakeboarder in the world, mm -hmm. on the dock and uh, met him on the dock and said, you know, I'm Pete Fox, you know, love to, you know, get to know you, so on and so forth. Within a couple of months, Pete was super jacked on the idea and uh, we kind of took off from there and ran with it and signed, uh, signed Sean up for three years and then started to build that team out along the way. And uh, it was, it, I mean, it was awesome fun just because it was something different. And uh, I mean, here I am growing up in the world of dirt bikes and oil and gasoline and, you know, all kinds yeah. of dust and mud and all this shit. But yet now I'm at the lake and there's boats and there's babes and there's different things going on that normally you wouldn't <laughs> see at a motocross event. So it was cool. And I'll add bikinis and butts and other things that go along with the B word. All right. <laughs> so neither here nor there it was, it was intriguing to the brand and to me as a, as a team manager. And then what I did was the same thing I did in all the other sports, BMX, mountain bike. Mm -hmm. And now it was wakeboarding was figure out the right personalities that need to be involved with the brand. It's not always about being, uh, how can I say, risque or loose or the party animal. The, the Fox mm -hmm. brand was always about a family brand and it was always mm -hmm. about being involved with family and doing the right things and being involved with the right things and the right people and right team members and all that kind of stuff. And that's how I always grew the team out. So kind of with that being said, wakeboarding was something new, something different, but at the same time during that era was the whole freestyle movement of motocross. And mm -hmm. now you've got guys that are doing stuff that are crazy and they're, you know, whatever they're, they're not, they're athletes, but they're a different type of athlete. All right. They're crazier. They're more party relative. They're not so much a training group. Right. I mean, they train as far as their, their tricks and their skills and abilities, but you don't have to be like physically fit a hundred percent, even though right. I beg to differ because some of the stuff they do is pretty, it's amazing for You've sure. You've got to be strong. You have to be wicked oh, yeah, strong absolutely. with that bike around. And calculated yeah. hugely. And I, right. and that's all part of the mindset and that's all part of the groove. And that involves racing, that involves freestyle, that involves, mm -hmm. you know, free riding or just even trail riding. So mm -hmm. I agree with that. But with the freestyle movement coming in, that kind of gave a little bit of a different personality. Now we had some with Palmer, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's kind of a different sport and we're not too sure how we want to fit or where we want to be. And at the end of the day, we ended up figuring that out as well. So, I mean, right. that, that was the, that was the forte. Then in late, late, uh, I think it was almost 2000. I want to say we got a uh, marketing manager in there and uh, 
I was doing all the sports as a, a team manager, big roundabout thing. And mm-hmm. I had, I had five guys that worked, four guys that worked for me. I had a guy that did freestyle. I had a guy that did BMX. I had a guy that did, you know, surf. I had a guy that did amateur motocross and I was dealing with pro motocross and a couple other, well, I was dealing with the whole thing, but kind of overseeing right. it all. So when he came in, he, uh, he said, what two sports would you like to do? And I said, well, I'm pretty good traveling the world and traveling the universe at this point in time. I've already done it for 15, 17 years. You know what I mean? Like I've been everywhere that I could possibly want to go. And not that I'm being out of line by any means, but I really enjoy amateur motocross and I enjoy wakeboarding. So I took those two sports and those were the two sports I took. And I ran with those from for the rest of my career, basically until later in later down the road, when the company sold the family Mm -hmm. sold the company, basically they, the new owners didn't want to be involved with wakeboarding. So we got away with that, gone away with that team. And, Mm -hmm. uh, just focused on amateur moto. Okay. So along that time, when you're now focusing on amateur moto and wakeboarding, is this also the time when the clothing brand started to take off as well? And how much influence did you have in, in that too? And was the clothing also influenced by the freestyle motocross? Because obviously those guys didn't necessarily need to have full leathers and kit. They wanted to look a little different. So Definitely, definitely. And that's a great point that you put out there is uh, freestyle had a lot to do with the movement of uh, just casual clothing, Mm -hmm. along with us breaking out and going into wakeboarding and going into surfing. Those were two other facets that were more of a casual clothing type of scenario. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of one of the one of the focuses based on Pete was to be able to build these brands out and to be successful, we we have to have the correct athletes involved. So if we're going to sign a new athlete, what we want to do is we want to sign a new athlete to all his motocross gear. Plus, we want to sign him to all his casual wear. Right. right. Same with mm-hmm. the wakeboarder. Wakeboarder would be considered more of we don't want to be involved with his wetsuit or his rubber. But at the same time, we can totally capture his focus of his casual wear. Right. along with everything that had to do with X games, right. And BMX and Dave Mira and all those, all those people and that whole movement with TJ and yourself and everybody else. So, I mean, those things are kind of the stepping stones and it was not, I don't want to say it was super thought out. It just kind of came naturally. And right. Pete was, Pete was the mastermind behind it all, but he had his brother, Greg in the mix too. And then brother John, who was his right-hand man, designer guy, you know, doing gold shorts and shirts and stuff like that. So it, it was, like I said, that synergy of the family running the business and then the people that were involved with the people that became family of the business. It, it was monumental in our growth. And, and that's kind of how that whole clothing movement came to be. And I mean, anybody can sell a t-shirt, anybody can sell a sweatshirt. We all know that. But at the same time, when you're getting into jeans, you're getting into shoes, you're getting into eyewear, you're getting into polos and cut and sew items that are, you know, a little different and, you know, stylish style pants. It's, it's a tough business. And, I think the the new owners kind of took away that whole kind of facet by Mm -hmm. taking away the sports along with taking away those, uh, those other measures. But it was kind of one of those things where you could see Quicksilver taking a poo. You could see Volcom not doing so well. You could Mm -hmm. see, you know, O'Neill on its kind of average scale, right? So I, I have to say somewhat of the people that were involved with the business and the new owners had an inclination of what was going on and where the market was going, along with everything going online 
and not so much in the retail right. store going to, mm -hmm. you know, Pac Sun or, you know, Tilly's or wherever it may be. Right. right? To gather their goodies. Right. Right. Yeah. There had to be a, an online presence. And I think the people that jumped on that early did, did a really good job of it and saw it before the yep. brick and mortars started to, to take a dive. Um, yeah, those were tough. Um, when Steve Budnick and I would get on the phone and talk about the next thing I wanted to do with Reynolds racing, we would get on the phone and joke about it and laugh and giggle and make fun of stuff. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, Oh my God, that's what we're going to do. And that's how we created the fun laid back kind of atmosphere that we did with Reynolds racing. What you said to me about it's a family and we would come home and we would talk BS, but then we talk a little business. That's the organic way that it grew. And that sounds so fantastic. Instead of sitting down going, here's the business plan. Here's how it's going to look. That doesn't really? work. Because you have no idea what it's going to look it like. It does that's not bullshit. work. I'll tell you right. right fucking now, it does not work. I am a prodigy of that. It does not work. <laughs> right, right. The, the organic setting of people being involved and the stoke factor when you're involved with that sport. I mean, I mean, what, Terra Firma came from a surfing video. It came from a surf video. And really? the brothers, Greg and John, were super into skateboarding and super into surfing. Well, if anybody knows anything about video and production of video, like the first ones that ever came out that were action sports orientated were surfing and skateboarding. Right. And animal chin. You know so what I mean? So good. I mean, so dude, good. Pal Peralta. I mean, the, those, I mean those, those videos were what Greg and John were glued to to capture how to do the trick or – create that next maneuver that they wanted to learn. So that's how they learned. So in return, they're like, why aren't we making moto videos? And then everybody in the whole house is like, we're missing the boat. What are we doing? Right. <laughs> and we, it wasn't, we're missing the boat. It was like, we can do something in our sport that is from another sport, but, the coolest thing ever because everybody wants to watch some guy whip it or go through the whoops or go through a turn or go check the technique. Right. right? And right. I'm going to go check the technique on yes. you. But that, I mean, that's what it's about. Everybody wants to learn, you know? Yep. It changed the, the game. When I would look at magazines, I would study riders yep. positioning and check a look at see where their back tire is in the corner and just yep. anything to try to figure it out. But the video came along and you're like, ooh, now I can see it. And it makes a lot of sense. Let's rewind this in slow motion. Yes, sir. Different yes, program. Sir. Different program. And those videos are awesome, too, that you guys have put out. They were killer. Yeah, Again. but I mean, that was, that was one of the things that perpetuated the company to the next level. And it all happened in conjunction with our growth. And it was right. natural. It was nothing, it was organic and natural. It was nothing that was super planned, right? right? It was nothing that was like, oh my God, here's what we're going to do two years from now. No, it was like, hey, we can do this next month. You, you guys in? Are you down? Let's right. make it happen. And right. everybody was on board and everybody was gung-ho. Everybody was gung-ho because it was new, different, exciting, right? Right. Why do you think companies aren't willing to operate in that space and just in that free wheeling kind of a space that proved that it can generate money and make money. And it doesn't have to be, this is how it is. And this is how we're going to do it. Cause that's boring. I, I got to tell you, I've worked for a family run business, my pretty much my entire life besides the past, you know, six or seven years. And uh, the availability to have the personality of the guy that has the checkbook or that has the common sense of the knowledge of what you're chasing that can give you the tooling is, is it, it's over and above. It's monumental because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if they believe in you and you believe in your own project, you're going to be able to take it to the next level without having to do over overindulge in like planning 
I guess. Right. Like mm -hmm. terra firma was like totally from the hip, right? There was some, there okay. was some, there was some things involved, but it was very, very minimal. The more we grew as a video company, the more those things came into play. You had a, you know, you had a picture board, you had a soundboard, you had, you know, maybe a little script or two. I mean, you, you had to get a helicopter. You had to get a helicopter with the logo on the side that was all black that would fly around, so you could see that too. Fantastic. Well, I mean, those are all. The, I mean, those are all part of. That's all part of the marketing when you. It when is, you and it was amazing. It. And the dirty of it all. But, you know, those are all things that, you know, we're sitting at home just relaxing, watching surf videos. And we're like, this is what we need to do. I mean, Pete, it, Pete's a genius. John's a genius. The family, Greg, he's a genius. Like they all have their own little pieces of this puzzle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, besides the dad, Jeff, who's the grandmaster wizard, I call him the wizard of Oz, right? Because he is the best ever. I mean, he's, he's the master, but he gave the tools to his kids to, to grow the company. Then the kids kind of gave us the tools we needed to grow the company. And right. it was natural and organic. It wasn't planned and plotted. I mean, a little bit, but not really. You well, know, I mean, you gotta have an money, idea. The more exactly. money you make, the more planning you get. Sure. But the right. less money you're making, the, I mean, the more you're shooting from the hip. You know what yeah. I mean? No doubt. That was kind of the beauty of it all. I love that. That's amazing. You once told me that prior to that, you were going to do something else with your life. What was that? Uh, <laughs> prior to me, uh, well, during my racing career and during the time that I raced dirt bikes, I, uh, I'm very fond of, uh, of the weather, natural, natural things that are pretty much out of our control. So uh, yeah. I took a big, big liking to the world of weather and meteorology. I went to college for about almost two years before I, uh, I was in meteorology and I took TV broadcasting. So I was trying to do one of the two same. So I, I wanted to be a weatherman, but I, my goal was to be a different weatherman than the other weathermans that you saw out there. I wanted to bring a little flavor, a little style, a little, you know, a little pizzazz right. to the whole thing. And uh, I could see that create, yeah, create my own little, area right oh well he's you know he does san francisco or he does la or he does san diego or he's in arizona or wherever he is right so i always thought that that would be a unique uh creative path and you know i took that path and i wandered down it for a while and uh got a phone call one day from the company and uh pretty much stood up and left my books on the uh desk and walked out and went to work for the company and kind of never turned back for 31 years. What do you think you would be doing or would have done had you not accepted that phone call or the offer? Outside of the weather thing, been, what do you think, what do you think would have, it would have been like for you? I mean, you could have ended up at the I, weather channel crushing it. it, it I'm driven. I, I, I know what I want in life. I know where I can go. I know what I, I know what I want. And it would have been, I would have been a weatherman and I would have created that path and I would have been unique and I would have been different. And I might've got kicked to the curb a hundred times, but at the end of the day, like that was, that was my thing. That was my focus. And, uh, you know, I, I got to say the only other top focus was being a team manager and, and being involved with the company and, uh, you know, uh, I just I have respect for the gentlemen behind the scenes that make those choices and and win for the brands that they're involved with. And 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 to me, that was that was something I think that took more of a I think I I, I felt that was more natural and easy. Now, I don't want to say easy, but more natural for me than it was to try and go to school and learn and get involved mm -hmm. with a bunch of politics and a bunch of news stations and a bunch of you know what I mean uh, you yeah, God I knows what that side looks like but I don't know but 
you never know. So I went with something that was a little bit more, a little bit more up my alley for that time of my life, you know? Yeah. Well, since you did go down that road, what do you feel has been, or was your most gratifying time as a team manager? Was it, was it a championship? Was it uh, finding the next guy? Was it, you know, being that force of, you know what, I really helped grow this sport and this brand together. Like there, there's, you did a lot. Honestly, Todd, a whole yeah. bunch. I mean, that's a tough one, master. <laughs> that's a tough one. Right. Um, you know, I uh, played a role in a lot of different segments of action sports, the growth of action sports. Um, I super enjoyed X Games. I, I super enjoy motocross as the number one sport that I was involved with. I mean, wakeboard's my passion. Surf has always been a passion. All these different things. Mountain bike was something that I got involved with that I really ended up jo- enjoying. And I, you know, honestly, I don't have the answer other than the fact that I, I felt like I've taken the right path that I need to take as far as uh, an adult, but neither here nor there. I still question the other side on, uh, (laughs) you know, what it could have been or how it could have been or what it could have been, you know. Well, I had to ask because you've worked with some of the greatest athletes in in my time and in in, in the times before and after. So you've touched a lot of people, dude, a lot of people, and have had a major impact on a lot of really incredible athletes. They're all great guys. I mean, from RC to Dave Mira to, you know what I mean? Kevin Windham to Doug Henry to Travis to James to Malcolm to, I mean, uh, Tony Hawk to Caballero to Danny Way to, I mean, there's millions of athletes that I've been involved with. Not millions, right. hundreds of hours. Dude. And yeah, I, I, I've enjoyed all of them. And they're all awesome personalities, you know. And there's there's a few standouts that are above the rest and that are definitely guys that are, you know, that are better and above than others. But at the same right. time, all the all the boys are all super respectable and they do great jobs and they always are great listeners. And I'm not, I'm not the magic man by any means, but you know, if I have a little influence here, a little influence there to give them a, a better look or a better feel or a better, you know, interview or whatever it may be, or add this or add that. I mean, that's, that's what I'm there for. And, you know, I've enjoyed every part of my career. It's just, it's, great to be challenged but at the same time it's great to be a master of the trade hey so man a, a fresh pair of gloves goes a long way quickly mm-hmm. tell me mm-hmm. <laughs> tell me about the tie that you have with britney spears this is one of my favorite stories of all time <laughs> i love this oh well <laughs> uh what can i say uh became friends with uh with the family years ago through Pete and a couple other other folks. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the, the whole thing, this whole thing with her and the family and all that kind of stuff is pretty, pretty close to my heart and pretty touching. But at the end of the day, I have respect for everything and everyone that's involved. And, uh, you know, I'd rather not get too deep into it, but respect to all of them and, and the best to, 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 to them, to all of them. Because her kids were racing motocross, right? And that's how, how that came about? Not, no, not necessarily. Her dad's a, her dad's a super fan of, of moto and, uh, and dad's, uh, been involved for years and you know they're they're a big motorsports family and uh you know they have off-road vehicles and they got dirt bikes and you know that was always got part it. of their always part of their upbringing and 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 dad's always been a super fan so jamie goes to all the big races and he's a avid master chef he is one of the best chefs that i've ever uh 
been under as far as learning how to cook and <laughs> and being involved from the from the dirty south of Louisiana, right? Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, from crawfish to you name it, that the man is he's an incredible dude, and you know, the whole family is incredible. So, I mean, nice. wonderful people, but neither here nor there. It's uh, nice, just wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And, and, and she's not the only musical person that you've had the opportunity to work with as well. I mean, hasn't there been oh, some not at all. I mean, and everything else that you've jumped in with? Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, see, it never ends. Are we, are we really going to go? <laughs> are we really going here? <laughs> I mean, you can make that one a quick I, one and I'll let you get out of here. Oh uh, no, we're, we're good. I mean, that was, that was one of the other things that uh, the brand wanted to be involved with were mu- like musicians and, yeah. upcoming acts and and guys that were cutting edge and you know uh pete fox back in the day uh he was he he did stuff with skid row and sebastian bach back in the day made tour jackets for the for yeah, the man. band and and everybody that was involved with that and then from there he uh he got involved with dmx and uh sponsored his tour one of the tours back in the early nineties with, uh, then we get involved with the Wu-Tang clan, meth and red and RZA and all those boys. And, uh, it, it, it's one of those things where, uh, for me, it was very, very cool to be involved with that totally opposite personality of someone that's involved with sports, right? All those guys, super like Wu-Tang Clan is all about BMX dude they love BMX they love BMX right but then you go you go to someone like Sebastian or you go to somebody else like they're more in the moto right so it's like for me I became good friends with uh, one of the guitarists the lead guitarist from Slipknot his name is James Root and uh, James you know he he I met him through a friend and of a friend and kind of like Sonny Garcia and invited him. He came to tour here in town and invited him to come ride with us one day. And uh, we took him out. It, you know, came, stayed the house, stayed at the house, woke up early, went dirt bike, took him riding, came back in the afternoon. He was so sore. He could barely play that night. And it was cool because we gave him something that made him super, super stoked and happy. Yeah. And, but yet, then again, he was able to go perform that night in something that he he loved as well. But something he really liked was moto that he didn't get to do because he's on a tour bus all the freaking time. Right. right? From one city to another. So he got a little outlet and uh, great guy. We still talk about it to this day, but uh, another wonderful guy and outlet in music and personality that is different than your normal sports figure. And that came along with the, the casual line too. We talked about that earlier and, you know, some of the clothing and some of that kind of stuff, but really it was kind of on the front side of the curve before that actually happened. So, I mean, (laughs) those guys are, uh, they're too much. I mean, (laughs) Just Speaking between Method much. Man, Method Man, and Red Man, and DMX, those those guys right there. <laughs> that's a hand. That's a handful of crew you got a handle um, on. And all um, three of them, they were all on tour together. So it was one of those things where all of them in the same spot at the same time was it was pretty epic. Maybe some saying. pretty big energy at that time for sure. <laughs> so oh, you've done awesome. some. In, oh, I'm sure you've done some through the roof kind of things that some people wish they could have had a a little snippet of um what's next for todd hicks where do you go from here uh i'm just kind of putt-putting along to tell you honest god truth i'm uh i'm involved with a little coffee company that we're working on right now called uh moto joe it's uh mx joe coffee on instagram and uh it's very very small it's a hundred percent kona coffee uh, brewed over, uh, actually all the beans are grown over in Kona and, uh, very small family run business. So cool. kind of farting around with that. Um, honestly, uh, 
whatever comes my way, I'm kind of coasting. I have an idea. I, I just, I, I'm a caretaker, Craig. I like to take mm -hmm. care of people. I like to, I like to be involved with events. I like to have uh, people be looking at me and knowing that I'm responsible for what's in charge and what can happen. So maybe some event stuff, I think cool. maybe a little bit, but more than anything, I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do something for myself and uh, nice. on my own, on my own. So that's, uh, I, I've been doing it for somebody else for a long time and I've enjoyed it. It's just not, I, I enjoy a family run business. So if I'm able to get into a family run business, I'll definitely take off running at the same time. Uh, corporate America kind of is in my, my, my gig. Well, I, I think with everything that you've accomplished actually, you in your cut career. that out. So I don't lose a job opportunity. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to no fuck it all up right um, now. <laughs> right. Well, you know, with what you've accomplished in your career, um, I think you can pretty much write your check for anywhere you want to go. So um, again, yeah, man, I that. thank you for everything that you ever did for me. I can't tell you how many times I hit the ground and got up and thought, thank God Todd sent me that helmet or whew, I didn't get any cuts on here because when I slid 40 feet, I had the right gear on. Um, yeah. That was because of you, well, dude. And thank that's you. all. Well, it's all in the brand and all the designers and technology. It's not me. I just gave you the proper tools in order for you to put them in your toolbox in order to go to work to win. It was one less thing I had to worry about. It was one exactly. less that's, thing. So that's what I'm here to do. Take well, care. I appreciate of you that. Take man. care of you. Take care. I appreciate of you. that. Right. And I'm sure whoever is, is next in line is going to be beyond grateful for it as well. So um, Todd, thank you for your time today. Again, this has been a long time coming. I'm so glad you, you were able to, uh, put a little time aside so I could, uh, drag you on here. So, um, much I appreciated, appreciate much love, brother. I appreciate right. you more than you ever know. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of work to do because I appreciate you more. So you have a well, wonderful day, brother, brother. You as well. If you guys like what you're seeing here, please make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple podcasts, subscribe there as well. Have a and wonderful check this day. Guy out. <laughs> Man, check that, that dude out. Ah, uh, na na na. <laughs> See? Make you say, huh? Right? <laughs> you're the you Entrepreneur. are the best. All right. Nice yeah, to meet you next day. time. All right, brother. You too, man. I'll talk to you soon. You betcha. Aloha.